Okay, so now we're back for episode two here in uh, Scotland. And we left episode one on, at the end of basically our first year, we just gone through our first autosave. Uh, you know, we still need a successor. And that's what these two things are yelling at us about. And at the same time, um, you know, we are working our way through trying to sort of get something going on down here in Galloway. Up. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Now, we have a, um, we now have a thingy. <laughs> I think we now have a claim against Galloway, so we could go and use that. Um, before we do that, let's check some stuff out here. I've got it going on slow, so it's not a big deal. Galloway, you can see his commander skill is 9. Uh, he can muster somewhere around 1,144 men. Um, we can muster... Uh, 1.41 and you know we should be able to um, it gives us a numerical advantage I'm hoping that it gives us a I'm hoping that it gives us the advantage we do have a better uh, tactician here I do have I wonder if part of my problem might be that these guys are busy doing something for me. So I'll tell you what, let's take Hugh off of uh, taxes for the moment. Oh, I can't do that. That's right, he's stuck there. Okay, let's let's see how this goes. All right. Whenever you, uh, it's a good idea whenever you decide to declare a war to go ahead and stop the clock. And the reason for that is because your enemy will probably rally his forces right away, and you want to ha already have your forces available and on the field. All right. So right now, one of the things that's preventing us from having more men is that our pal, the Bishop of Crossregul. Only has a 44 opinion of us, which probably means that uh, he has a better opinion of the Pope uh, than we do. And since we're Catholic, this is a this is a thing that happens. So what we're going to do is raise personal levies. Okay, we still you know 22 gold. Any sort of extra stuff we can do here? Not really. My concern is is that uh, going in without any other commanders is a bad idea. Even though I'm pretty darn good at this, meaning that my stats are pretty darn good at this. You can see he's raised almost 1,300 men uh, to face us. And you can see he's also got enough men for a left flank here on the battle screen. And that's bad, because that guy's just going to keep picking us off uh, until we break the middle. We're probably not going to focus on him. Um, even though we could run him off very easily. Okay, so you can see the the number totals going down. Um, these red things here are morale bars. So that's not the size of the army that's being affected, that's their morale. Um, in this combat system, the decline of the morale is just as important, uh, in some cases, as actually killing people. In some, some opportunities, it, it's more important. You can see that... Um, so we've got their morale down to about half. And you can see that sort of in the reflected uh, damage that we're doing down here 
again, this guy is going to be really annoying the whole time, and I'm hoping that he doesn't get to turn the battle in his favor. Okay, so, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Let's speed things up. Otherwise, we're going to be watching this battle for like a long, long time. We're still not going to, still not going to go by super fast. But I want to keep things at a speed where I can at least manage what happens. Okay, so we've defeated... We've defeated uh, the army of Galloway. We now have to besiege the various parts of Galloway proper. And fortunately for us, Galloway only has two parts. The bad news is uh, one's a castle. The other is a church now or a cathedral. Now, one of the interesting things about these different kinds of holdings is how you siege them. Castles have a much better uh, fort rating, obviously, than uh, cathedrals or cities, the other two things. So you might, my, my best um, suggestion to you if you're besieging a castle is not to assault it, which is this button right here, particularly not at the low troop numbers that we have. Um, whereas when you're facing a, a city or a temple, Assaulting it is not necessarily a bad thing as long as you've got plenty of men. We don't have a lot of men, so I have a feeling that this is going to be, uh, you know, a <laughs> this is going to be a rather protracted fight. We also got a uh, message from our sovereign. He wants to make us his marshal, and that's fine with me. That gets us a little bit more prestige. As you can see, we're kind of hurting in the prestige department simply because um, I went ahead and you know married the <laughs> married the woman with the most stewardship. What the hell? Uh, okay. It looks like we have a, a revolt taking place. And that revolt is taking place in Argyle. Um, so that's interesting. We're not really going to be able to do anything about that. Um, we're going to have to. We're going to have to stay here and continuing to continue to besiege Galloway. Now, Duke of Galloway's troops ran off, but eventually they will come back. And we'll probably have to fight another battle with them. Hopefully, we will be, uh, we'll have enough troops that that won't be a big deal. Meanwhile, there's going to be all sorts of little run fighting between, um, you know, the King of Soriar and, uh, and the Count of Argyle. I don't know if that's going to mean uh, whether or not. I don't know if that's going to mean anything about these guys up here. I don't think they will leave us alone in order to fight. In order to fight Argo. Um, but you can see both military scores down here at the bottom. There's our war. You know, our one battle against uh, Count Fengal gave us a 21% uh, war score. And somebody else fighting uh, Gilbride gave us a 2% war score. Okay, Gilbride's just raised more men. I think this is about, 1,500 should be about as much as he can raise at this, at this stage. Now, my concern is that he's going to come and try to fight us. Okay, he's now got 1,600 men. Yep, he's started, he's decided to go ahead and besiege our area. Now, because he's got more men than we do, he very might, well might, attack us. No, he's decided to leave. Um, 
Interestingly enough, I have left my army behind in order to command the big army. Okay, I have no good choices at Marshall for Marshall here. We're going to go with Marcus, but we're really not going to go with Marcus. Okay, because we're in Scotland, I'm choosing uh, to learn more about rough terrain. I think we got beat in this fight. Or did... No, no, no. They got beat in this fight. So, so I got pulled out of my own war. I got put into their war. And now my troops are being led by nobody um, over here in Galloway, which I guess is fine for the moment. So I'm bus so I'm actually leading this siege over here. These are my guys, leaderless here, uh, besieging Galloway. And these are Galloway's troops. Uh, there are not enough of them to actually besiege the holding that I have in Carrick. So they're there, and they're just kind of sitting there. But they're not actually doing anything. Um, and so, you know, while these sieges are, are going on, we can check. Now well, maybe we can't check the siege. Oh, wow, they pulled their fleet. My imagination is they'll probably land here on the home base. Oh, wait, these guys are going to, these guys, never mind. They came down here to the Isle of Man. You can see that uh, we've kind of beaten off this guy's assault. It's now a 70% uh, chance of victory, while I'm still only at 21% here with Mr. Fingal. And our war is entering its second year. Uh, yeah, we're kind of running out of money. This is probably the earliest I've ever gone to war. Uh, my first game, it uh, took me a while to get sort of on my feet. I also realized I was also at a disadvantage as far as... Um, you know, it's a disadvantage as far as troop strength, and it took a few turns to recruit as opposed to just going in right away. So that was that was my fault there. Okay. I think that the son of the of the Duke of Galloway was still in my army. You can see that my war score has dropped down to 19% because I'm the aggressor and things have been going slowly. But now that I've captured Dungarit, it's jumped up to 83%. And now um, I, I still love the fact that I'm basically, oh no. And we can't do anything more until we get more men. That is bad. That is very bad. Okay. Okay, I, I should have seen this coming. So we need 400 more men. I. The other thing we could do is try to beat his army again. So let's transfer my guy into control of my own army. Pause the time. And this is a long shot here, um, not because of the men involved. But th that it would actually end the war. All right, so we've got another fight going on here and you know, after the armies got beat up the first time, um, you know, both of them are kind of... And you can see this jerk uh, is trying to move in on our 
on our gains there. So there's a lot of stuff that happened real quick here. And I, I wasn't really anticipating uh, much of it, if any of it. Um, if we lose this fight, or even if we win this fight, I did, and it doesn't push us over the top as far as war score is concerned, I don't necessarily know where we're going to get more men right away. I mean, we're certain. Never mind. We're good. We're good. We've won the Battle of Turnbury. Okay, and so I pause the game so we can make peace. And we can enforce our demands. Okay, now the next thing we need to do... Um, yeah. So clearly it'd be good to drive those guys out of our territory since this is now ours. You can see we're on top of it. Um, oh, I see. He's, he's besieging the castle that we put there. Okay. So we're going to have to go beat these guys up. And I'm hoping that'll get us out of our territory and we can... Uh, then make peace because I, I haven't really spent a lot of time with my wife this year. Okay, they removed me from this battle and they put me in control of the main army. I may be coming down to save my own butt. Our... Yes, yes, indeed, that's what I'm doing. So me and another guy are here to do in the remainder of things so you know our, our boss guy who we're eventually gonna have to turn on um kind of does a favor here now i'm not sure not sure what i want to do because these guys are going to keep wandering around. Uh, there's not really anything for me to do in Galloway so much. Let's see if I gained any more court courtiers. Andrew, Spouse Ross, you. Yeah, Marcus, my terrible marshal. Somebody had a kid, just not. Okay, unfortunately I can't marry Evander to anybody. Um, Moxa can't stick him into the middle of the fight. I don't have any prisoners do it. No, I don't. Okay, I think we need to uh, I think we need to continue to help out our guys. And finish off this war quicker. Um, it's only gonna cost me money. Now, it's interesting to note uh, that even though I have, um, okay, so that, that army is now down to 300, um, let's see if it's safe for me to bring these guys home. Okay, they've got they've got a thousand ninety five. The hell. Okay, that's something we might need to investigate because if they successfully um, rebel from 
Norway. That'll make that'll put them move them much further up my target list. Um, now I've noticed that I control Carrick and I also control Galloway, uh, but I was not offered the ability to to form the Duchy of Galloway. And I don't exactly know why that was. Okay, we are going to go. We're going back to Carrick. This is. If he needs to raise troops from us, he can do it the old fashioned way. We're not going to go into war for a little while here. When, you know, we need to. Um, okay, we need a couple guys we need to recruit. You need to do something else. Um, Okay, I will send you over to the Isle of Man. Okay, let me try this again. I'll send you over to the Isle of Man. Now again, the reason I'm going here rather than um, well, any one of these uh, more proper Scottish counties is that I can, you know, as long as I'm fighting within the kingdom, vassal to vassal, I can do that without too much problem. The issue becomes if I want to fight for a Scottish or for a true Scottish county. I need to. Uh, Sorry, I need to stay home. You have to win this war without me. I realize I'm your marshal and all that, but I really need a kid. Uh, whoa. Okay, so one of the things now is that we've got an additional county under our belt. No, uh, that's not good. Um, so the next time that we go to war, we can draw on Carrick's manpower and Galloway's manpower uh, to do this, which gives us the total manpower score. Now, it says about 181. Um, so, you know, we haven't quite incorporated all of Galloway's strength yet. But 1.8 is going to be much more than... Well, okay, about not quite twice as much as what the Isle of Man um, can be is capable of delivering. One of the other things, nice things about taking the Isle of Man is it would give us access to a a duke title, I think, um, so that we could you know better organize some of these counties. Otherwise, the first duke title we're going to be able to run into is probably be the one held by our boss, uh, King Godridge of Soriar. Who right now has 300 men sitting in Moray doing nothing. While these guys are besieging Dunstoffage, his capital. Slowly. So if we look at you know what we might do next, I think that the next logical target is the Isle of Man, and then we have um, we've got an opportunity to either cross to Ireland, which we probably need to do at some point anyway because this area is incredibly divided and a target of opportunity, or uh, taking on what's left of Gilbride the Fat. Now, because I've totally conquered 
Galloway here. I don't have to worry about making peace. Although I might want to save my game. Although we're, getting, we're pretty close to the new year here, so I'm not I'm not that desperate. Ah, here we go. And now we've got a 100% war score on this guy. So he should... Okay, well, they're evidently... Okay. All right. So that fight's over. Okay. This guy's in prison. But he's still in control of this county. Doesn't have a lot of military strength. Up. Oh. And now we have a Scottish revolt. Okay. There's a lot of crap going on. Okay, we've got Norway invading here. Of course, I think we all knew that. No sign of... Of course, it's 1069. King Harold probably won that war. Um, all right. Five. I think our guy's in the wrong spot. I think we might actually want to be in Argyle simply because they have taken more damage. The Isle of Man, you know, it will honestly just sort of sit there. Uh, it'll be it'll be there for us. Okay, Athol has sort of become rebel. It doesn't help us right now. That um, that gives us a new potential target uh, after after Argyle. I, I don't want to take. Um, I don't want to get involved in a huge war in Scotland uh, right just yet. I, I really don't have the strength for it. The only reason I'm interested in Argyle is because they were so wounded. And we, okay, we've got it. Now, before we, okay, before we use it, let's go ahead and make sure that, you know, we save this game. Um, all right. Now. Okay, my marshal's not going to be worth much on the field. But my steward is. So I'm going to... Well, I could kind of use him anyway. What's your military rating? Eh, you don't have one. Not one of any value anyway. Um, all right, so let's... Uh, See here, do I want to try this? I'm going to be by myself. I still don't have a, uh, I still don't have a kid. But I need to do this now before they get stronger again. So yeah, I think that's a, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do here. Okay, note that now the bishop actually gives us access to 57 more guys. I don't think that's going to make a huge difference here. Um, you can see Galloway isn't quite repaired from... Uh, 
our last meeting. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send these guys over to Clydesdale and join them up there. And then I'll unify those armies. Oh, you mean to tell me I got... Okay. My guess is that I'm currently in the middle of recruiting troops or something for... Uh, for our boss. There's a notice that I have no leaders to select here. So we're going to go in. I'm going to hope that they don't have anybody leading either. Okay, they actually have a bishop with 11 leadership skill. Based on the numbers, it shouldn't make huge amount of difference. All right, so <laughs> our army's been pretty lucky uh, this time around. So now we're besieging the castle at Dunstoppage. Now there's Argyle, as you can see, has got three um, three holdings. So you don't want to kill all your guys taking the castle. And I don't know what's happened to Argyle's troops. I can see there's a Scottish army in Athol um, besieging that area. So, yeah, we're just, uh, you know, this is all growing great, except for the fact that we don't have any babies. And I'm not really sure, uh, I'm in a position where I can get a baby right at the moment. Also low on cash. Of course, the reason I'm low on cash is I've spent cash on two um, two claim certificates so far. But that process has been going a little bit um, faster than I would have expected. So while we're besieging this town and nothing else can really happen, let's look at uh, some of the things that we can do here now in the intrigue screen. So things I could do. I can still kill a bunch of people. Um, including my wife. It's not really where... That's not really what we would be aiming to do, though. We have enough money to bring a priest to court. It's unlikely that he would be uh, a huge advantage, as it, as it were. Okay. We've done the most that we can do here. There are 12 people in our court. So let's see who number 12 is. Up, oh, that's Una, a one-year-old. Uh, this is the son of the guy who I took Galloway from. So that's exciting. We're now running into debt. Yeah, the thing is, is I don't like I don't like the idea of attacking a castle with two to one odds. I think the rules for assaulting in the siege are like three to one at the minimum.
Okay, so here we can uh, possibly gain deceitful or possibly gain honest. And I would rather possibly gain honest, although it doesn't look like I gained anything uh, from that particular little event. So this is one of the all right, got some more money. Um, those extra tithes only happen occasionally, and I mean, it, it mat it's based upon the skill of your steward, and we had a, pre a pretty good steward, even though we first tried to make him our marshal, and then, you know, got mad at us twice because we couldn't figure out what job we wanted to give him. But... Now, um, with the city, you know, just like we talked about the, the battles. Okay, I don't know who Patrician Knut of Straben is. But if they're telling us about him, he must have something to do with us. It sounded like he was a leader of a merchant republic, which I don't really know how many of those are hanging around or where exactly they would be. Maybe... Um, uh, auto save hits maybe maybe over here in the uh, what will later become the Hanseatic League I'm not I don't know okay I'm doing a really good job as Marshal of Soriar which is Okay, I guess, except that it means that my own men are leaderless and just sort of watching the grass grow while they're waiting for this castle to fall. You know, I'm really hoping that We won't need to do too much more besides take this castle to end this war because, uh, I mean, we will. There's no there's no way the building's important enough to jump us from 26 percent all the way to uh, all the way to 100. But hopefully, we won't have to do too much more than that. You can see our our little gang of guys trying to fit on uh, one little space on the board. Okay, now I know that you're not. You're not doing claims right now, right? Why don't you go and... Uh, can't make buddies with anybody. That's okay. I don't want you doing claims anymore. Okay, I tell you what, just stay in Argyle and... Or sorry, Argyle and we'll uh, just make friends with people. Okay, England has declared war, I think. Oh no. Wait, what the? Okay, so Cumberland has been occupied by the Duke of Gwynedd. The Duke of Gwynedd, or the Petty King of Gwynedd as he's called here, is a Welsh noble over here. I would not have been surprised if England had declared war on Cumberland. Um, I mean, goodness, Harold, you know, is sort of occupying the north over here. But I I'm not really seeing the... I guess he had some sort of bizarre claim. You know, much more... I mean, if he had, had a claim on Chester, that would have made more sense to me. Although Cumberland is far more exposed... Cumberland is actually a part of England's de jure territory, so technically England can declare war for it whenever, as long as they don't have it. Um, and it always starts off, well, at least in the 1066 games, it starts off uh, in Scotland's hands. And so that war is often fought. Now, I am not going to engage this group into a shoot, well, I say a shooting match, but 
That won't work. How about a slugging match? We're not going to engage them in a slugging match either. And the reason I say that is because, you know, at 2 to 1 odds, we just don't have uh, the manpower. You know, we do need some of these guys to actually survive this war. So we're getting close, though, to capturing um, the bishop for a cure, and that means that when we capture the little city of Denali, uh, we will be uh, done fighting uh, these guys. Now, one way we could speed this up would be to have their army show up and fight us again, that would probably get us the extra 6% we would need. You know, but I don't see those guys anywhere, and I don't want to risk rushing the assault. Denali has barely a fort level, but the 1,910 guys, that gap could close rather quickly. So we're just going to leave them alone for the moment. All right, so we, oh God, when it is on the march into uh, Tiviadale, I did Gwynedd declare a war against Lothian? That's got to be what's going on here, but this is, this is bizarre. He's just a Welsh guy being Welsh. Okay, Dirk... Duke Erlen the Usurper evidently took over Katniss. Uh, you know, from whoever the previous... Ah. Count Pal of Orkney, who is must have been the previous Duke of Orkney. If there was a previous Duke of Orkney. I don't know if Orkney is one of those duchies that starts off. Okay. So, good for us. We've got another county. And I don't think he's our prisoner, though. She might be. Okay, we got a little more, we got some money out of that, but not, not a ton. I was kind of looking for prison. Okay, no, I didn't take any prisoners uh, from those guys. So let's go ahead and knock off our war expenditures. And we are, we are now in pretty good shape. So the next war that we launch, although it's going to take us a little while to um, get these guys back and going, it's so next time war that we want to launch, we have options. We can attempt to gain our independence in Soriar, as we now have sixty percent of his territory. So he can only draw troops from two parts of it, although they are the parts on both of our flanks. Um, or we could secure one step further by going after the Isle of Man, which I believe is the easier target. Uh, yeah, they've just now gotten up to 1.6 or 1,000 or, you know, 1,006, uh, whereas our strength, this is theoretical strength, mind you, our strength is now up to 2.4. But I think it'd be a good time for us to kind of calm down 
um, now that we've got three, you know, three counties, it'd probably be a good time for us to calm down, uh, take stock of the situation, and try to have some kids. Ah, unfortunately, the year turned before we could have a feast. That would have been a good thing. Um, one thing you, you know, while you're, when you're trying to rebuild your military back up to snuff and whatnot. The intrigue decisions that sort of raise your prestige are always a good idea, assuming you have the money. And they don't cost a lot at first, although since we only have 52 gold right now, they would probably hurt a little bit. Uh, the Summer Fair is a good one. Again, you need 25 gold to trigger it. Um, it's a relatively cheap option, but that makes people happy. And then the big one is the feast and the feast is big because not only can you look at raising your prestige you can also um, talk to the nobles of your realm there are events that pop up and some of those can be good um, for the future okay well my friend was <laughs> released from his dungeon to Sort of another dungeon. All right, let's see if we can trigger a summer fair here in May. Um, as you can see, our domain size, we're still okay on that. Um, you know, we can take two more counties, and the logical two counties, again, would be man. And then finally uh, taking over the Isles. How much is it? You see, he says it says two point oh six, but that's like his total. I think that's his total strength. So I think that includes the Isle of Man. So if I take the Isle of Man from him, he basically only has his own island to depend on for troops. And I'm pretty sure that we, you know, will outnumber him by a fair amount at that point. Oh, it's May, so I think we'll go ahead and launch a summer fair. Okay, um, I'm going to lose some gold at the expense of gaining some prestige to get rid of a monkey problem. Okay, we could, we could do this. We could get the peasants are upset, which could go, lead to a revolt. Um, we could gain 10 piety, but hurt our bishop's uh, opinion of us, which is kind of a weird trade. Or we could possibly gain Gregarious. Uh, we might need the bishop before things are over. And it doesn't look like we gained you the gregarious trait so ultimately that didn't do us uh any problems all right well that sound means that uh this episode is over so we've done uh quite a bit here we have added to the realm we've got um not man sorry we we conquered galloway we conquered argyle we're going to be looking at conquering man and uh, sorry are, but you know, it's the Hebrides, the islands. And our summer fair just finished. I'm gonna press pause here. And after that, you know, um, maybe we could try our first war against Norway. I'd rather think not since Well, actually, it looks to me like um, Harold Godwin won the battle down here. Oh, God. And Norway is being attacked by rebels. And King Harold died during the war. 
Okay, now we can't attack Norway at this point, but that that lets us know that war Norway will take a little while to recover from that. So, you know, if we have the opportunity, uh, particularly in, in Katniss, you know, where this guy is, about a thousand men, you know, then maybe it would be a good time to look at that. But we'll just take it um, take it as we go, and we'll see what happens next time. See you then.